Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Since its inception in the 1950s, Lockheed U-2, also known as Dragon Lady, has been a pivotal part of American aerial intelligence. Originating from a proposal by Lockheed Corporation in 1953 and taking its first flight in 1955, this high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft has played a critical role in various geopolitical events. Its ability to gather intelligence at altitudes of 70,000 feet made it instrumental during the Cold War, notably in missions over the Soviet Union, China, Vietnam, and Cuba. Beyond its Cold War service, U-2 has been active in conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq, supporting NATO operations, and contributing to scientific research and electronic sensor development. Remarkably, it remains in service with the USAF, showcasing over 50 years of operational history with updates like the U-2S model's technical upgrade in 2012. With its historical and strategic significance firmly established, the U-2 also stands out due to its impressive technical specifications, tailored for high-altitude, long-endurance missions. Spanning 63 feet in length and boasting a wingspan of 103 feet, this remarkable aircraft combines size with agility. Its height reaches 16 feet, supporting a substantial wing area of 1,000 square feet, essential for its high altitude performance. Under the hood, the U-2's prowess is further amplified by its robust power plant, a single General Electric F-118-101 turbofan engine, delivering a formidable thrust of 17,000 pounds force. This power enables the aircraft to maintain a cruise speed of 413 knots approximately 475 miles per hour at an altitude of 65,000 feet. Additionally, the U-2's design accommodates a maximum takeoff weight of 40,000 pounds and can carry a fuel capacity of 2,950 U.S. gallons. Such specifications not only reflect the U-2's engineering excellence, but also enable it to cover an impressive range of 6,090 nautical miles, solidifying its status as a premier asset for high-altitude reconnaissance. The U-2, despite its advanced design, requires regular maintenance like any other aircraft. Routine checks and minor repairs follow traditional methods, ensuring swift turnaround for missions. Let's embark on the crucial aspect of pilot preparation for U-2 missions.
Understanding the extreme conditions faced at high altitudes and how they shape the pilot's gear and procedures is essential. Key to a U-2 pilot's gear is the S-1010 pressure suit, specifically designed for the U-2 R plane. At altitudes above 63,000 feet, where the U-2 often operates, the lack of atmospheric pressure can cause human blood and other fluids to boil. Not only is the pressure suit a safeguard against this potential danger, but it also provides critical protection from the extreme cold encountered at mission altitudes, which can plummet to around minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Moreover, in the event of an ejection, pilot could be in free fall for two to three minutes before parachute deployment. The suit's design accounts for this, offering flotation capabilities for water landings as well. The U-2 pilot helmet features a coated fabric face barrier, which divides the oxygen supply into two sections. This barrier is meticulously designed to create an airtight seal, crucial for maintaining life-supporting conditions within the helmet. One compartment covers the eyes, nose, mouth, and chin, while the other encloses the rest of the head, linking to the air inside the suit. The soaring ability of the U-2, while advantageous in flight, presents challenges during landing. The aircraft's long wings create a cushion of air that can keep it airborne even close to the ground. Pilots, often fatigued after hours in a pressure suit, find landing the U-2 particularly demanding. A unique solution involves a chase car that follows the U-2 down the runway, with a pilot inside the car providing real-time altitude updates during the critical last few feet. That's the launch. That's awesome. Once the aircraft slows, the ground crew swiftly moves in to insert the pogo supports into the wings, allowing the U-2 to taxi safely to the hangar. The U-2's unique landing gear configuration plays a vital role in its operation. Eschewing the typical tricycle design, it utilizes a bicycle configuration with two main sets of wheels. The rear wheels coupled to the rudder assist in steering during taxiing. Additionally, pogos Auxiliary wheels under the wings maintain balance during taxiing and takeoff, detaching upon takeoff. Let's delve into NASA's utilization of this remarkable aircraft, particularly the ER-2 variant, which is integral to numerous scientific studies.
NASA's engagement with the U-2 began in earnest in 1971, initially using standard U-2 models before transitioning to the ER-2 in 1981, with a second unit added in 1989. These aircraft have been instrumental in a wide range of environmental and scientific studies spanning six continents. The ER-2's missions have contributed significantly to research in areas like global warming and ozone depletion, benefiting not only NASA but also other federal agencies such as the U.S. Forest Service, Environmental Protection Agency, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Army Corps of Engineers. The ER-2 operates at altitudes where the air pressure is so low that an unprotected pilot's blood would boil, a stark reminder of the harsh conditions at the edge of space. To combat this, ER-2 pilots are equipped with pressurized suits akin to those worn by astronauts. These suits are crucial for survival in these extreme conditions. Aboard the ER-2, the airborne visible infrared imaging spectrometer plays a vital role in Earth observation. Utilizing over 224 sensors, Avaris can identify, measure, and monitor natural features of the Earth's surface and atmosphere, all based on sunlight reflection. This technology was recently leveraged in the Hyperspectral Infrared Imager Airborne Preparatory Mission, which focused on assessing coral reef health and monitoring volcanic activities around the Hawaiian Islands. The data gathered is not only valuable for current studies, but also pivotal for the development of a future NASA satellite aimed at studying natural hazards and ecosystems. Both Avaris and the ER-2 are managed by NASA, with Avaris developed at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, and the ER-2 is based at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Palmdale, California. The U-2, including its variants like the ER-2, stands as a testament to human ingenuity and the pursuit of knowledge. From its origins as a key asset in Cold War reconnaissance to its current role in groundbreaking scientific research with NASA, the U-2 has continually evolved, transcending its initial military purpose. Its enduring legacy is not just in the domain of defense, but also in its significant contributions to environmental studies and space research. As it continues to soar at the edge of space, the U-2 remains a symbol of the relentless human quest for understanding and exploration, bridging the gap between military innovation and scientific discovery. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.